So hi everyone, uh, I'm Shotaro Sano and I joined the NPFN in this February. So thank you for listening to my presentation today. Today I will talk about Hyperopt, uh, which is a Python library for hyperparameter optimization. So in this presentation, uh, first I will describe a uh, very basic usage of Hyperopt. Then we will go through some algorithm and background theory uh, which is called three pattern estimator, TPE in short. So let me start from the background. This presentation is about automated way of hyperparameter search. And I think uh, the most naive and basic method is random search and grid search. So they are very comprehensive, but, uh, and, and we can probably get near optimal solution with enough number of trials. But the biggest downside of them is they are too much expensive. Like if one training takes hours or days, it's not realistic to try all grid among the search space. Much better way is to utilize a search result. For example, once you try several points in the search space, you can get some idea about which part of such space get good result and which part is not. So we can uh, you can just focus on the beta part in the next trial. To sequentially apply this idea is called um, SMBO search, which stands for uh, sequential model based optimization. And uh, today's topic, TPE and hyperopt, is part of that. <coughs> so let me get into the main topic, hyperopt. So uh, this is an off-the-shelf library written in Python for hyperparameter search, and uh, with an algorithm, algorithm called TPE. We can basically get better and faster results than grid search or random search. And I think the uh, first development uh, started around 2011. The original paper presented at NIPS. And um, after some Kaggle competition, it becomes famous, and nowadays we can see a lot of use cases, um, including Kaggle competition as well as actual industry. So this is simply called snippet of hyperopt usage. So here let's consider that we want to train multi, uh, a multi layer perceptron uh, with Adam optimizer. And uh, we don't have any idea about which number of uh, hidden layer units is better, and uh, which value is better for Adam parameter. <coughs> so to use hyperopt, we need to set up such space and objective function. And this is one example of uh, such space definition where we are setting the number of units uh, up to 1,000 random integer and uh, setting the uh, Adam parameter uh, between the power of minus 5 to minus 2. So here I'm, I am writing HP log uniform. And this is what is called a stochastic expression in hyperopt. Uh, this is later on combined with such history to make up some distribution to suggest next parameter. I will, I will describe some detail about this process later in this presentation. But here the point is, so no, you can bias the distribution with this setting. That is, for example, if you consider the parameter always to kind of log scale, you can specify here log uniform. And if you can, you, you just consider that it's uniform or Gaussian, you can also specify that. And hyperopt actually supports nine kind of stochastic expression, which includes categorical and continuous variables, and for each uniform distribution, Gaussian distribution, and log scale as well.
And after uh, setting the search space, the next step is to define the objective function. And this is actually what we are always doing with machine learning experiments. That is right training and evaluation logic. For example, here just splitting the data into training and a test and fit the model and uh, returning log loss with test data. And here I'm, I'm using log loss metrics, but any metrics is okay. And finally, we can run the experiment just passing the objective function and uh, the search space setting. <coughs> So basically, that's all about the uh, uh, setting for hyperparameter usage, uh, hyperopt usage. <laughs> I think it's very simple. So let's see the uh, result and how it works. Uh, here I'm showing the comparison between random search and hyperopt. Um, the, so this is, you know, search space. The horizontal axis is Adam parameter and the vertical is number of units. And let's see the result. So the dark marker is better result. And at first, both algorithms act just randomly, but gradually, hyperopt tend to take the right side of hyperparameter space, which means actually good. So, yeah, so from this, uh, I think we can conclude that, um, so at the beginning, they just act randomly, but gradually, TP get close to high performance area. For example, after 30 trials, we can see small tendency of high power to getting good performance area, and after 100 trials, the difference is obvious. And uh, that's uh, about uh, hyperopt introduction. And next, let me describe algorithm of hyperopt. The uh, background algorithm is called TPE. And for each trial, I uh, mean each training, TPE suggests good parameter uh, for next trial based on historical data. And the problem setting here is the input is such record as pairs of the parameter and loss. And the uh, output, output is parameter for next trial. One thing need, we need to care about is that hyperopt does not care about the correlation among the multiple hyperparameters. So TPE algorithm is actually applied for each axis of such space. So let's see the procedure. Uh, so let's consider that this is input, the record of historical search results, parameter and loss. And uh, here uh, the performance is sorted by the performance uh, loss. The first step is to split uh, this uh, record into two parts of good result and bad result. And next step for each group fit the distribution of parameter. Here uh, I mentioned uh, fitting the distribution, it just as uh, kernel density estimation, which is adaptive one, uh, but uh, you know, yeah, just apply kernel density. And one more thing is um, we set up stochastic <coughs> expression for each parameter, so this we should consider about that. That means, uh, you know, the algorithm take care of this. For example, uh, you set up log uniform. It is scaled to log space and fits the distribution. And after fitting the uh, above part, we also fit the distribution for the bottom part. So now we have two distributions about parameter data, and 
let me just name the, the uh, top distribution as L and the bottom as G. And uh, what we originally wanted to do is find out next parameter to be tried. And the idea here is for the upper distribution, the higher the likelihood is, the better the parameter is. And for the bottom, the lower, the better. It's just an idea, and there are no proof of that. I will show some proof later in this presentation. But let's just for this idea. So what we want to do is maximize this and minimize this. So just taking the argument minimum um, of the bottom distribution divided by the upper distribution. And this is actually output of TPE algorithm. So next, let me uh, so, you know, uh, provide some theory and proof of this idea. So actually, the motivation of uh, TPE algorithm is to maximize what is called expected improvement, whose definition is here. Uh, here we have three variables of x as hyperparameter and y as loss and y star as target performance. And so, so if the in, in next trial, if the loss is better than target performance, we are happy. And here we consider uh, the target performance as the gamma quantile of such history. That means, remember that we split the data at the very beginning of the algorithm. This split is done by gamma quantile. So actually, the target performance is in between of split data. And another Im important expression is, you know, about uh, uh, what's that? Um, distribution uh, of each group. So you know, uh, it's actually the uh, conditional probability uh, y uh, x given y, and uh, the uh, loss is uh, lower than the better than the target performance. It's L x, otherwise G x. Okay, we now have three expressions about you know expected improvement and the problem setting, and we can break down the target. Uh, metrics of expected improvement like this. I will skip the detail of conversion process uh, as it's actually simple maths. But the point here is, so we want to maximize expected improvement. And the, at the third line, we see gx divided by lx. And the gamma is actually constant. So to maximize expected improvement, we need to minimize this distribution. That's the reason why we did, did that. Just taking the argument minimum of G divided by L. And that's a proof of this idea. So let me briefly summarize the uh, uh, algorithm. Input is pairs of um, you know, parameter and loss, and split the data, uh, you know, by the target performance. And for each group, fit the distribution, and using this distribution, just take argument minimum. That's all about TPE algorithm. Okay, so, uh, it's basically all about that, but uh, I actually skipped uh, small uh, details. As Hyperopt follows two papers, and the algorithm I presented here is about the first paper. And there is uh, some gap between Hyperopt implementation and the first paper, like, you know, the gamma quantile value is not constant in the implementation. So if you are interested in, uh, please see also the paper as well as Hyperopt repository. 
So finally, uh, let me give you some complementary topics. Um, so today I talked about hyperopt and TPE. And uh, by the way of optimization is not only them. So we have Bayesian optimization, bandit approach, and a lot of other approaches. And as far as I know, you know, guys, Gaussian process approach is getting much more focused than the other method. But the uh, best method depends on the situation. One of the interesting topic for me is, you know, some state of the art method proposes searching parameter based on epoch instead of training. You know, we always run, you know, training, all training, all epochs. But, uh, you know, in their method, they cut off the training, just looking at the intermediate <coughs> value. This is a very, you know, simple idea, but actually makes total search time much, much faster. And we can see an example of this in freeze soul and <coughs> uh, okay. hyperband. So if you are interested in, please uh, follow the paper. And uh, so we also have other options other than hyperopt, like spearmint, gpyopt. They are based on, I think they are based on Gaussian process approach. And uh, another thing is there actually is optimization as a service, which is called SIGOPT. So they are providing kind of hyper-opt-like API on the web. And another uh, interesting thing is uh, Google also published a paper describing their internal service for hyperparameter optimization. I think it's like SIGOPT. And um, so if you are interested in the system aspect of parameter search, it is good to read. So that's all about my presentation. Thank you for listening. So I think we still have time, so any question? So you talked about the cutting off training before Convergence? Uh, cutting off terrain? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, like in freeze hollow. So here? Yeah. You mean? So, so I wonder, does this work for hyperopt as well? <laughs> uh, hyperopt doesn't support this. Well, but I mean, if you're, you're tuning parameters for a neural network, you could just train it for a few, like 10% of the full epochs, so mm -hmm. it doesn't converge, uh, and then get results quicker. So, so you can try explore the parameter space much quicker. Does this still work, or do you need to actually train the model until convergence each time? Oh, okay. I, I, I actually, I'm a bit behind. So, oh, you mean, um, so y your point is do it in hypoct? But oh, okay, let's discuss later. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, so uh, sorry, sorry for interruption. So your uh, concern is if the uh, number of data becomes, you know, million uh, no, no. The number of hyperparameters. Means, you know, the axis. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, so, uh, yeah, um, okay. Uh, it's actually, you know, um, hyperopt does not care about the correlation, so the, you know, it's applied for I independently. Make sense? Uh, so if it, if it doesn't do uh, early stopping or, or termination of the epochs beforehand, how much parallelization can it support? 
because it's trying to improve based off of the previous studies. How how parallel can hyperopt go? Uh, in, in hyperopt and so, in other words, running say ten experiments with different hyperparameters at the same time. Mm -hmm. And support that? Like, how does that work? Uh, or is it based off of one experiment, next next experiment? Find the hyperparameters, get the result. Next experiment. So, so you, you mean so hyperopt basically depends on the so you know sequential optimi optimization, right. but it's applicable for distributed environment. Can it can it be done in parallel? Um, I think it's actually support, but I'm not sure about you know TPE can get full performance with parallel you know running. I see. Okay, so it doesn't support, say, multi-node and running. Which nodes? Uh, I think we can do if uh, so. So they actually uh, provide uh, MongoDB integration. Okay. So just put MongoDB and access <laughs> from multi-node. Okay. Thanks. Uh, is there any risk for really getting in the local minima? Uh, as far as I understand, TPE has some risk about that. I think it's kind of greedy, whereas Gaussian process somewhat, you know, concerned about that. So just follow-up question, like if it is stuck in the local minima, is there any mechanism to escape from the local minima? Sorry? If the optimization, in the, during the time of optimization, if the like energy or the optimization parameter is stuck in the local minima, is there any process or technique that it will escape from the local minima? With CPE? Yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> and another question is like, there are several different kind of uh, interfaces you mentioned. Like what are the Q uniform? Is it like something? Uh, HP uniform? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So. So quant is it like related to quantum or something? Oh, quantum. Uh, <laughs> like no HP Q uniform HP Q. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, this is you know uh, <laughs> it's for example for integer. Uh, so uh, also it supports rounding, yeah. but uh, you know. It's necessary not integer. Sometimes we want to quantize. Ah, uh, quantize? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <coughs> I think that's all. Yeah, so thank you again. Mm -hmm.